AFR On Demand is brought to you by Breck Golf. Try Beaver Creek today, just 20 minutes from downtown Baton Rouge in the Zachary area. They've got a PGA Tour driving range, a short game practice area, 30 to 40 yard practice shots. It's a great place to chip and putt and practice if you don't have time for a full round. Book your tee time today, golf.breck.org, golf.breck.org. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge studio. Let's ride! Off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Pluckers. I'm Matt. You are a loser, Matt. Hey, shut up, kid. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. You so. I'm a Bobby girl in the Bobby world. And Mr. Toby Templer. We're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there. Make it a good one. Russ Mitchell next hour. Pat Donovan uh, does radio for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He'll be with us here in 15 minutes. We'll get a, a thumbnail preview of the Bucs, who uh, been pretty good offensively under Baker. They've really struggled this year defensively, but still 3-2. Uh, and two, Tied atop the division after they, like the Saints, gagged away a game in Atlanta here in consecutive weeks. But big one for the Saints and the Bucs. Division game in the Dome coming up on Sunday. And, of course, the Bucs evacuated to New Orleans ahead of Hurricane Milton. So they're already in New Orleans where they've been all week. So we'll talk to uh, Pat Donovan here in uh, in less than 15 minutes from right now. One of the things that I've talked about consistently for more than a decade now is what I have termed to be an inevitability in college sports, particularly college football, which is that we are going to move to a one college football. Um, some have called it a super league or whatever. It, c- phrase it, call it whatever you want. You understand conceptually what I'm saying. That college football will operate independently of the NCAA, of all the other sports. It will uh, be exclusive, not inclusive, where the top you know, 60, 70, whatever number of teams it is, all come together and have their own league, similar to what the NFL does. Um, and, and I've, for more than a decade now, really, my this first became very clear to me during the most severe uh, and radical realignment changes, which came after the 2010 season. And that that's when Missouri and Texas A&M announced they were coming into the SEC. That's when Texas and OU threatened to go to the Pac-12, but were lured. Uh, to stay, enticed to stay in the Big 12. It's when the Pac-12 expanded, added Utah and Colorado. You'll remember that. The Big 10 added Nebraska and Rutgers. That's when it crystallized for me. Like, this this is going to happen. It's an inevitability. Uh, And that was just, it it almost happened that summer. But they were able to steady after the the earth shook. Um, In all we've seen for the decade plus since, are things that have gotten us closer and closer. Well, Ross Dellinger, uh, I'm trying to get on the show later in the week, but I wanted to talk about it before we had Ross here. Ross has an exceptional feature story up at at Yahoo right now. Um, Again, hat tip Yahoo. They do great work, and it's free. No paywalls, any of that stuff. Kind of like LouisianaSports.net. And Ross interviewed some some 30-some-odd people uh, for this piece. While SEC and Big Ten leaders mull major changes, a new Super League concept could radically alter college sports. Now, I know as you read that headline, you're going to think, I've heard this already. Super League, mega conference, whatever, all this stuff. Here's why it's different. Uh, It's called Project Rudy. After Rudy, Rudiger, uh, the former Notre Dame walk-on, you all know the whole story. 
And the three people that are spearheading this are all former Disney executives. They have a TV and programming background, and they certainly understand how the money flows. A couple of the, the pillars. This would be a 70-team structure, 7-0, it would preserve the four conferences, the power conferences. It would expand the postseason. It would overhaul scheduling, whereby, and this is my favorite part, the 70-team Super League would only play games against each other. You would never, ever, ever again have to watch LSU against South Alabama. LSU against Nichols. All the garbage games they cram down your throat to collect a gate receipt that nobody wants to see, you would never have to see it again. You would have uniform scheduling across the board in college football with a true expanded postseason. And, and this is why, this is why it's going to be endorsed by many administrators it would tier revenue distribution infusing as much as nine billion dollars of private capital cash into the system uh, smash capital is the name of the private equity firm the venture capital firm that is proposing this now there is a flip side of this which is if you're going to take private money, they're going to want something. They're going to want a return on their investment. They're probably going to want some control. Now, what does that control look like? I don't know. I have no idea. And that's the thing you got to figure out to be certain. But I want to remind you, Greg Sankey was a guest on, what, what show was this, Muse, last week? It was a triple option podcast. Who's it? That's, that's Mark Ingram, Urban Meyer, and Rob Stone. Okay. Sankey's a guest on that podcast. And he was asked about something. It wasn't even about realignment. But the answer he gave got a lot of people's attention. Give, give a listen. I think there's probably more of that conversation happening now because of the disdain for what's happened in some compartments. But just having a commissioner wouldn't solve the transfer portal and the legalities around that. It wouldn't solve the name, image, and likeness issues. It wouldn't resolve lawsuits. And so we have to deal with what's in front of us. We're going to have to deal with that in the system we have. And it's going to have to adapt. Would that lend itself to some kind of central coordination? I think that's a lot more difficult proposition than people understand. I've studied it a little bit. And uh, I come back to, I don't want to dumb down the Southeastern Conference to be part of some Super League notion of 70 teams that some people speculate mm. would happen. Mm. They want to mm. be us, and that's on them to figure it out, not mm. on me to bring myself back to earth. Mm. We found out Greg Sankey has seen Project Rudy. Uh, that Remember, that soundbite, that interview was a week ago. We just had the report by Ross two, uh, two days ago. So, yeah, or yesterday. So... As we now have found out, every conference commissioner, dozens of prominent athletic directors, coaches have all seen the deck for Project Rudy. And so Greg Sankey was asked about, I remember now, he was asked, would you want to be a commissioner of college football? And he spun that from, would you be a commissioner of college football to, I don't want to dumb down the SEC. Well, what he's saying is, look, Everybody else in college football is chasing us. We have the brands. We have the revenue. We have everything everybody else wants. Why would we want to bring ourselves back to the pack? You want to be us, do better, and catch us. That's what Greg Sankey's saying. But in actuality, if you go to this 70-team model with one television contract, one playoff revenue stream, it renders a conference commissioner useless. You don't need a conference commissioner anymore. Like, the, the NFC South doesn't have a, con, a, a division commissioner. You have the NFL commissioner. One person that oversees the whole thing. How would that structure in college? I, I don't know. But what's very interesting that they propose is a, t, is a four-tiered revenue system. 
So it wouldn't be like all 70 teams get the same. Alabama wouldn't make the same as Iowa State. Georgia wouldn't make the same as Purdue. Ohio State would make more than Mississippi State. So it's how it would be tiered. And by the way, based on your success on the field, you could move up or down in the tiers year to year. So there is actually an opportunity for advancement as well if you're able to figure it out and maximize how you spend your revenue. But I think this is a magnificent idea. It's a long read. If you have the time, I would strongly suggest you do it because of how this ends. Um, I'll read the very end of this for you. And again, this is a I, it, this is probably a 20-minute read. I mean, it is a long feature piece, and Ross did an amazing job. He interviewed 30 people for it. But he says, questions abound. For some, answers are easy. Quote, too many schools are saying this makes a lot of sense says one supporter of the model who presides over a power conference athletic department. Quote, we're not ready for it, rebutted a high-ranking Big Ten school official. Quote, there has not been a tipping point yet. Will this happen eventually? Yes, said one SEC school executive. It's all inevitable. So will this happen in 15 to 20 years? A chortle emanates from the other side of the line. Quote, oh no, much sooner than that. So whether you like it or not, whether you're ready for it or not, whether you're resistant to change or not, the thing that I have sat here on this show and this microphone and told you for more than a decade was inevitable is coming to fruition because it is. People in positions of authority, people who build big businesses and big companies don't stop wanting to grow. They never get satisfied. They're never satiated. Like Google isn't like, oh, we're worth $2 trillion. We're good. No, they're constantly looking to innovate to see how they can continue to grow. It's no different with the NFL or sports leagues or any business at all. And college football, major college sports is a business. So all of these schools are thinking, how do we keep raising revenue? Remember also the, another piece of this, which maybe is just as important, it would solve the, the amount of capital ingested would solve the revenue share issues that a lot of schools are trying to figure out. And it would be enough revenue to save your Olympic sports. This solves too many giant questions facing major college sports not to happen. Just a question of when. All right. Uh, if you want to react, you can. Let me knock out a break. When we come back, talk some Saints Bucks. Pat Donovan does bu uh, Bucks radio. We'll get an update on Tampa next. It's AFR. After further review. Ooh, temps dipping below 60. Y'all, it's time. Time, time, time to call River City's one-hour air. Get that heater safety check, y'all. 752-0001, 752-0001. Your heater is dormant for months. It could collect dust. It could be hazardous. Before you turn on your heater this winter, make sure you call River City's one-hour air. 752-0001, 752-0001. Or onehourbr.com. They'll come out to your house. They'll make sure that your heater is clean, it's tuned up, it's safe and efficient for the winter months. Got to do this. Take these precautions. Not only will it protect your home and your family, most importantly, of course, but it'll also extend the life of your unit. Mention the Moscona special, they'll save you 30 bucks. It's River City's one hour air, 752 001, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Pluckers Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Pluckers Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. <laughs> Who that say they're going to beat them Saints? Let's head behind enemy lines to preview this week's matchup. Well, the task at hand, most of them have their families here with them, so that's a big relief for them, and they, they're able to focus on the football. We understand that it, and the things that we do in football is a small mechanism in the game of life and how this uh, hurricane is going to affect people, but we, we are focused and we're trying to get ready for a game, and you know everybody's here and their family's here. That makes it a lot easier. That is uh, Bucks coach Todd Bowles. Of course, the Bucks evacuated Tampa ahead of Milton. They've spent the week here. Uh, in New Orleans, getting set for the game Sunday 
against the New Orleans Saints. Pat Donovan's part of the Bucks Radio Network, the pre- and post-game host. You also catch him on 95.3 WDAE. Good enough to join us for a couple of minutes. Pat, we appreciate it, man. How are you? Doing well, man. Good to be with you. It's our pleasure. Uh, obviously, everyone here is, is thinking of everyone there in the path of the storm. Can you just kind of give us an update of what it's like there as you all make the final preps? Yeah, and thank you. And, of course, you know, we don't have to tell you guys about our games. Unlike most places in the country, you guys get it. But, um, you know, right now it's it's a little rainy, a little windy out here. I'm, I'm just north of Tampa Bay, so I'm inland enough where it's not going to be too big of a deal. But uh, as you know, as you just mentioned, the Buccaneers left yesterday to make sure they didn't have to deal with any of this. And uh, that's probably a good thing for them because it, it's just the type of thing where you don't want to be having to deal with trying to get up there through this mess that could be here within a couple of days. Hey, Pat, the uh, just jog our memory here, man. Uh, I mean, the, like the Saints a couple of years played a, a, a quote-unquote home game against Green Bay in Jacksonville. So, I mean, everybody, we, as you, we, we've all at some point seen, seen this. Has Tampa ha- had to be displaced or gone – through this, the football team, um, in any time recently under under Bowles, where they've they've got these systems or protocols in place. Um, listen, they're always prepared because just like in New Orleans, right? Like this could happen at any moment. It's just kind of right. something that we deal with living in this part of the world. So it's something that there's always kind of a plan in place for. The closest thing I can remember, and and I don't recall the season, but there was a year where they had to basically move the bye week to week one because of a hurricane that happened out of nowhere. And there was just nowhere to nowhere to get the game played that week. I don't know if you remember this, but the, they ended up having to take their bye week week one and play the oh. entirety of the season without a bye week because of a hurricane. That's brutal. Um, I mean, it's just one of those ancillary things. I know that sometimes we have to talk about, but um, on the field, the, the Bucks have been actually a, Pretty good story to talk about. I think everyone kept waiting for maybe the uh, the clock to strike midnight on Baker Mayfield, but win the division last year, and here they go again right there tied with Atlanta at the top. Uh, through five weeks, what's been maybe the biggest storyline surrounding the Bucks? I think overall the, the offense and, and the progression of the offense under new offensive coordinator Liam Cohen. Um, I think a lot of people knew mostly what to expect out of this defense, and you know, with some of the injuries, I think the results haven't been a huge surprise, but what they were going to do differently offensively was a, a big topic coming into the season. I mean, it, it struck me during training camp that every single offensive player you talked to spoke about how much more complex this offense was, how many more opportunity this offense uh, should give them because of the way that Liam Cohen was going to call the offense, the different things they were going to do, the fact that Baker Mayfield would have two plays in his pocket every time he went to the line of scrimmage, which is something they didn't do last year. So he was going to have a lot more responsibility in this offense. A lot of players thought they were going to have a lot more opportunities in this offense. And even though it, it's been a little bit up and down the second half, they kind of fell off last week. And certainly against Denver, it didn't look good. You can see a lot of reasons why all the players and, and fans are much more optimistic about this offense under Liam Cohen as opposed to what they saw last year under Dave Canales. Is there, like, like, for example, the Saints with Clint Kubiak, we know they're using a wide zone. So it's very obvious when you watch them, like they are running stretch plays in the wide zone to get to the edges. Is there a noticeable difference that a fan would see when they watch the Bucks this year under Liam Cohen as opposed to last year under Dave Canales? Well, one thing that Liam Cohen wants to do, and we've seen this a lot in Los Angeles for years, right, where obviously he came from, uh, before he was at Kentucky as the offensive coordinator, obviously was a coach there in Los Angeles where he got to know Baker Mayfield a little bit, why they brought him in here. But um, what they're doing a lot is they're utilizing a lot of condensed splits, right? They're bringing their, their offensive weapons in towards the, the offensive line a little bit. It's supposed to having guys spread out wide, a lot more bunch sets in this offense. And really what Liam, what Liam Cohen has done and you can see it, you know, early in the in the season. Even though there's some things they really need to improve on, uh, including getting Luke Gedicki back at right tackle, just so that Baker Mayfield has enough time to get rid of the football. But they, he's doing a really good job of scheming guys open. Um, I remember it was, yeah, I think Chris Godwin who who noted he was going to be playing the same position that Cooper Cup plays in Los Angeles or does when he's healthy, right? Mm-hmm. And we've seen how many times that guy's been just open in space, and it's not because he's one of the best athletes in all of football. It's because of that offense, and it's some of the things they're trying to do here. 
Uh, uh, Pat Donovan is with us. He's on Twitter, X at Pat Donovan Radio, Bucks pre and post game host there on the radio network. Also, uh, uh, 953 WDAE, where you can get him. Um, Mike Evans is as steady as, as she goes, man. Just like maybe one of the best receivers in football that nobody ever really talks about a bunch. Uh, with Evans and Godwin, that that's still enough, or are there other uh, weapons offensively there that we need to know? Well, listen, they're really high on their rookie receiver, and even though he's had a bit of a quiet start to the year. Jalen McMillan, he can do some really good things, although we don't know that we'll see him on Sunday. Obviously, he missed this last game, so uh, he's got a hamstring going on, so we don't know if he'll be out there. Trey Palmer, a kid they took in the sixth round last year, um, can do some good things in the passing game, but you know, I think what can easily be overlooked right now is a guy with those two guys out, like Sterling Shepard, who's, as you know, a guy who's been in this league for a long time. Play has really fallen off in recent years, but has that relationship built in from his year with Baker at Oklahoma. And those two guys are just psyched to play with each other. Did have a touchdown in this past game. And uh, he's a guy that, you know, is just reliable. They know he's going to run the right route and can get lost underneath when you're focused on guys like Chris Godwin, like Mike Evans. So he's another guy that'll do some things. And listen, the rookie Buck Irving, he had a, a, a late fumble yeah. in this past game against Atlanta that was costly, but he is an explosive little back. He doesn't go down on contact the first time. And he's a guy that I think eventually is going to take more and more carries from Rashad White. And the more comfortable he gets at this level, I think can be a real weapon for this football team that for a fourth round pick, I don't think people saw it coming. You know, Pat, we were talking um, on the other side of the ball yesterday about this Tampa defense. You, know, you got a guy like Bulls there. It maybe caught a little, uh, maybe little off guard at at how poor statistically they've done. You know, at or near the bottom of the league in, in most major statistical categories. Uh, sometimes stats can be misleading. Um, how challenging has it been defensively for Tampa so far through five weeks? Well, it's really interesting because of the way this league is now, right? There's no such thing as a, an elite defense or a, a dominant defense in today's NFL. You're not allowed to be with the rules, right? So you have to be opportunistic, in my opinion, in this league. You can bend, but don't break. And, and to an extent, that's what they've done. It's why they're off to a three and two start and really should be four and one should have won that game against Atlanta. But the reality is at the same time, they just don't get enough pressure off the edge. Um, Yaya Diaby was a, a really good rookie last season and has gotten off to a bit of a slow start this year, but he's it's kind of Yaya and everybody else at outside linebacker. And again, Yaya's off to a, a slow start. So while they've got a, a horse like Vita Vea, who by the way has been in and out in the middle of that defense, who can create a lot of push in the middle of the pocket when he's in there, 10 sacks, by the way, the last two games since he's returned, uh, as opposed to Ooh. two going into the last two games. Over oh, the first three games, they only had two sacks. So they're missing a lot of pieces, especially in the middle of the football field, which is why uh, Kirk Cousins just had a field day this past Sunday. Their best and fastest middle linebacker, Servasier Dennis. Not, I shouldn't say best. I mean, Levante David's their best by a long shot, right? But Servasier is their best guy in coverage. He's out at one point last week. You were without your two safeties as well. And they just took advantage of the middle of that football field all game long. And I expect New Orleans, if Antoine Winfield Jr. is not back, because Zervasi will not be, I, I think they'll take advantage the same way, just going over the middle of the field, because it was just wide open all last week. But there's some things they do really well here, um, especially when everybody's healthy. But uh, at the same time, they don't get pressure off the edge. And you know, if you don't get pressure on the quarterback in this league, they're going to have a fun day. Yeah. Uh, the tricky part, for the Saints this week, obviously, is who, who's going to play quarterback. So there's a giant unknown yeah. there. And the Bucs have, have had the opportunity to play um, uh, a few rookie quarterbacks already this year. So see which which it is, uh, Hayner or Rattler for New Orleans. Um, yeah, Pat, I, I'm curious from the Tampa perspective how big this game is. Listen, the last two weeks, Tampa and New Orleans both just they just gagged away games against Atlanta. I mean, it just yeah. – it's – you all are feeling exactly what, what, what we were a week ago – you just scratching your head, wondering how in the world you, you lost that game, but it's the reality. I mean, the Saints are sitting there at two and three. Tampa's at three and two. You wouldn't think one game is a massive difference, but for New Orleans, if they fall to two and four with a couple of division losses already, uh, it's hard to, to see a path out. What about for Tampa at three and two? How big is this game when you start to look at what's ahead for the Bucks? I think it's a massive game for a couple of reasons. First of all. It's your second consecutive road divisional game. So you want to try to pick one of those up, right? But also you are coming off a loss where you're as disappointed as you are about the way you finished against Atlanta. So I think you want to try to rebound from that. On top of that, you know, this is a week where you look at it. And even though the Buccaneers have been displaced 
and are practicing at Tulane, and this is an odd week. They also right played Thursday night last week, so they're on the ten, uh, you know ten days before Sunday. Whereas New Orleans, as you know, just played on Monday night, so they're on a short week. The Bucks have extra time. This is the kind of game where you you, you kind of need to take advantage of things like that. No, oh, by the way, you look ahead on the schedule, and you've got Atlanta again. You've got Baltimore. You've got Kansas City. You've got San Francisco. It is a it is a very difficult schedule between this game and the bye week for the Buccaneers, which is like ten or eleven. And you don't want this thing to turn into a losing streak. So I think for that reason alone, the matchups ahead, this is a big game for the Buccaneers as well. Tampa three and a half point favorite in the dome Sunday noon. Saints and Bucks will renew the divisional rivalry. He's Pat Donovan, radio pre and post there on the Bucks Radio Network. Hey, Pat, good luck with the storm, man. Uh, Stay safe. Everybody here is certainly thinking about it and praying for everybody down there. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join us here today for a couple of minutes, man. Well, thank you. And I know I can speak for the Buccaneers and and everybody with the Bucs about how much they appreciate uh, the way they've been taken care of since they've gotten to town. So uh, it'll it'll be a weird weird thing where we kind of pretend to hate each other on Sunday, (laughs) but we have this weird appreciation for each other as well. Yeah, no doubt, man. Thank you for the time, okay? Anytime. All right, be well. That's Pat Donovan. Get him on on a Twitter, X at Pat Donovan Radio. Uh, we're brought to you by Michelli. Michelli Weighing and Measurement, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-I. Michelli.com at Michelli. They like to say, we show the world what measurement can do. If you weigh or measure something, they sell, service, rent the products used to weigh and measure. Our nation's largest distrib- distributor scales, I tell you that all the time. But they do so much more. So if you have precision measurement equipment that needs to be calibrated, Michelli can handle it in-house but don't pack up your equipment ship it to a calibration lab in chicago or something like that just call michelle they're local they can come pick it up from you bring it to their lab calibrate it return it you don't don't take six to eight weeks for something that should be a two-week turnaround michelle will make you more efficient iso 17025 accreditation they've got their track system a free service a 24 7 365 to all of your assets and calibration certificates why would you do business with anyone else? It's Michelle. Michelle weighing and measurement. Michelle.com. Michelle.com. Okay, y'all. Glad you're uh, aboard with us here. It is, you know, you, sometimes you don't think about how you look at a game through another prism. And one of the things we haven't really talked about here, and I know it's been quick because Tuesday was more about the reaction to the loss on Monday Night Football to Kansas City. And now we're sort of turning the page to Tampa. But it's it's true what Pat said. Thursday night football, when you play that, as much as it sucks to have the quick turnaround, the benefit is you get the mini buy after. You get 10 days. You play on Thursday. You don't play again until the following Sunday. So while the Saints have a quick turnaround without their starting quarterback, yes, Tampa has back-to-back road divisional games, but they have the extended week of, of recovery and preparation after having played on Thursday night football. So... Which side is advantaged there? It's probably Tampa. Even though they have to travel, they get the long week while the Saints are on a short week having played in Kansas City on Monday night. And, of course, an even further disadvantage, not having your starting quarterback. All right, we'll talk plenty about it as we get closer to Sunday. Glad you're here. Hump Day Show is brought to you by Pluckers. We'll knock out a break. When we come back, we'll do a little Pluckers trivia with Muse. Uh, Russ Mitchell in 45 minutes. Ton to do. Glad you're here. It's AFR. After further review. It's a home week for LSU, so you know where the Tigers will be on Friday evening. Tigers, their home on Friday evening is the Renaissance Hotel right there on Blue Bonnet. Every day here, I get to tell you about the Watermark and the Renaissance. Watermark downtown, Renaissance Southtown. Two of Baton Rouge's premier hotel properties. The Renaissance sprawling location right there on Blue Bonnet across from the mall and Perkins Row. If you're familiar with Baton Rouge, you know where it is. Super convenient to I-10, so you can get anywhere easily from the Renaissance Hotel. Of course, you've got an amazing dining experience with Tallulah in the Renaissance Hotel. And whether you're looking for guest rooms to stay the night, family members coming in town, whatever it may be, or a place to host your next event, the Renaissance has the square footage to host anything, from a wedding reception to an awards banquet, a gala or ball, or an entire football team, like they host the LSU Tigers the night before every home game. Right there on Blue Bonnet, it's the Renaissance Hotel. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Pluckers Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later, every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Pluckers Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. (laughs) 
we will get to our Pluckers trivia here in just a second, but we do have breaking news. Uh, this probably should not come as a gigantic surprise given uh, what we uh, what the reports were a day ago, but uh, Dennis Allen meeting with reporters quite literally as we speak. He is speaking right now to reporters. Uh, Dennis Allen has announced that Spencer Rattler will start on Sunday against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Obviously, for the rookie fifth-round draft pick, this will be his first career start. Uh, we will, coming up after the top of the hour, uh, revisit a lot of the Spencer Rattler, Jake Hayner uh, battle throughout uh, throughout training camp and how that went. But if you if you remember, it was very much um, a, a neck and neck type competition uh, where Rattler would throw a great touchdown pass, and then Hayner would throw a great touchdown pass, and then. Uh, Rattler would have a bad day and Hayner would have a bad day. And it was just they sort of matched each other. Preseason games was the same. One would have a good day, one would have a bad day in, in the preseason. So um, how they came to this decision is going to be very interesting to hear Dennis Allen's explanation of why, especially when Jake Hayner was the guy they went to in-game on Monday Night Football against Kansas City, yet with time to prepare here, they're going to Spencer Rattler. I don't think there's any question. We would all agree that physically... Spencer Rattler has the higher ceiling and, and the greater physical ability than does Jake Hayner. Again, nobody, I don't think anybody would um, would argue to the contrary. So this is an opportunity for Spencer Rattler. We'll see what he does with it. Again, Dennis Allen meeting with reporters right now. Uh, he has told reporters and announced Spencer Rattler will start on Sunday against Tampa Bay in the Superdome for the New Orleans Saints in place of Derek Carr. Uh, as DA continues meeting with reporters, the more we learn, uh, we'll let you hear it and we'll revisit all that coming up here in about 22 minutes after the top of the hour. So, uh, again, some breaking news there. Spencer Rattler will make his first career NFL start. All right, it's after further review. We're glad you're with us. We're brought to you by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, LMFJ.com, LMFJ.com. We'll get to Pluckers trivia here in just a quick second. Remember, if you're thinking of popping the question, gents, Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, they have helped Louisiana get engaged for more than 40 years. They will only sell the most beautiful, highest quality diamonds from the finest diamond mines in the world. You will never see a lab or man-made diamond in the case at Lee Michaels because what are you actually buying? At Lee Michaels, you never have to worry about the quality of what you're buying, the, the staying power, the lasting value. And this is something that ideally your wife at some point will give to your daughter, to your granddaughter, be passed down generations like, what are you buying? At Lee Michaels, you're always buying quality. Thrill her with a gift in the red box from Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. LMFJ.com. Okay, uh, Muse. Trivia, hit it. It's time for Pluckers Trivia. How many will Musso get wrong today? Pluckers Trivia, every Wednesday night, 7.30 at Blue Bonnet, 8 o'clock at Nicholson. All right. Muse got a little high on a supply last week with the Roanoke Colony and uh, missed out on a on a. It would have been a perfect week. God, that was last week? It was last week. That Roanoke. feels like a month ago. Uh, All right. No, no, no. no. That, was, uh, last, that was last week. Okay, Muse. Um, three questions. I just don't know how you're going to do here. Uh, you're definitely getting one. Okay. Um, actually, if you don't get one, you're fired. All right. You don't deserve Like, I mean... This would be almost akin to screwing up the Pete Sampras question. Well, I was just about to say, I mean, if this is a tennis question, not I'm tennis, not going to get it. But it's just one that, like, being someone who works in sports, your general knowledge of sports All should right. get this. All right, you're going to set me up for failure, so go ahead. The other two, we'll just see what you know. We'll just see what we know. All right, Muse. Which college sport awards the Oscar Robertson Trophy each year? Oscar Roberts. I basketball. Yeah. Hey. Oh. The big O. Yeah, man, it just didn't ring a bell. Sorry. We got it though. Knew it wasn't baseball. Knew it wasn't football. But what I was hoping was it wasn't one of these damn off the wall like 
sports that not that isn't played all stop the, all around the country. Every every word that comes out of your mouth just digs you deeper in a hole of lacking credibility with people in our audience. So got don't the do question that. right. That's I mean, you guessed, and I'm glad. Right. I'm glad you got it. But again, with every word you speak, you further nullify your ability to answer that question, thus calling into question your credibility. The Big O, you need to read up. On it. Get a book. Read a book. The Big O is one of the greatest college basketball players. One of the greatest. He's a, he's, a, he's a Hall of Famer. He's one of the greatest basketball players ever. Awesome. I like that. I mean, he is on par with guys like Bill Russell and Will. Great player. Great player. Wes Unsell. You're going to talk about like great. Do you know Wes Unsell? Nope. Mm. You gotta read a book, dude. You gotta read a book. Yeah. You gotta read a book. Probably not gonna do that, but um, for your own sake, you gotta read a book. All right, uh, we'll move on. Name that witchy movie based on the quote Kidnap the Sandy Claws, beat him with a stick, lock him up for 90 years, see what makes him tick. I'm guessing that one wasn't Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, no. Yeah. What's the quote again? Can I have the quote again? Yeah, yeah, sure. The country of origin. Yeah, the country of origin. Can you use any, it in a any, sentence? Any alternate pronunciation? Yeah. You want a sentence? This quote was in a movie. <laughs> uh, kidnap the Sandy Claws. Beat him with a stick. Lock him up for 90 years. See what makes him tick. A witchy movie. Ah. Uh, is this? I don't know. Macbeth. Uh, the Nightmare Before Christmas. Mm. Ah, Tim Burton. All did, right. did Sandy Claus not give it away? Sandy Claus? Never seen The Nightmare Before Christmas, actually. And that was one of those, we'll see what you know. Yeah, I've never seen the movie. Okay, Muse, uh, to completely embarrass yourself today, uh, which of these layers of the Earth's atmosphere is the lowest to the ground? Is it the stratosphere, the thermosphere, or the mesosphere? Mm. So I don't. I don't think it. I don't think it's the thermosphere. I, mm. I want. I want to. I want to say it's the mesos, mesosphere. The stratosphere is the second one, I believe. No. Oh. Mm. Was it thermosphere? Uh, it was. A, it was stratosphere. It was stratosphere. Okay. Wow. I thought that was the second. Uh, one. I thought there was one and then stratosphere. Muse. In disappointing, you never disappoint. Pluckers trivia tonight. Do better than Muse. Get on by. Eight, uh, 7.30 Blue Bond at 8 o'clock. Nicholson at Pluckers. You don't like our wings. We'll give you the bird. Uh, Muse will come back and try to redeem himself by reading off sports stories that he looked up because clearly he doesn't know much. How do you not know Oscar Roberts? I don't get Like, Pete's saying, I, I want to get a list of, of all-time great athletes and see whose names you don't even know. Oscar, the big O. I know his name. Like I've, heard, not. I've heard of Oscar Robinson. Just, you, okay, it's okay, just okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to save you from yourself because I care for you deeply. Well, thank the you. The more but... you talk, no, 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 the more you talk, the worse it is. So let's go to break. We'll come back and we'll do Tigers and the Pros. And you can tell me about all the great stuff that LSU players and the pros are doing, all the money they're making, and make us feel really good and happy. It's AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Action Industries. Oscar Robertson was a basketball player. He was not a welder, a pipe fitter, a crane operator, boiler maker. But if you're one of those things, you should call Action Industries. Because at Action Industries right now, they are hiring. They're looking for you. Trying to hire 100, 125 people for two turnarounds they have coming up. You'll know it's turnaround season. Two month-long turnarounds, four to five weeks. I work in seven twelves. Want to make that money here before football season's over, before the holidays? Action Industries is looking for you. You can apply online. I'll give you the website. Action, I-N-D-I-N-C dot com. That's Action Industries Incorporated. Action, I-N-D-I-N-C dot com. Or apply in person at their Highway 30 office in Geismer. Just go in, ask for Zach. It's Action Industries. Been around since 1982. It's Action Industries, proud partner of LSU Athletics. 
after further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Pluckers Wing Bar. Open till midnight or later every night of the week, where every Monday is all you can eat wings. Pluckers Wing Bar. If you don't like our wings, we'll give you the bird. <laughs> Wrapping up hour number two. Glad you're hanging out with us here. Just joining breaking news. Spencer Rattler will start Sunday against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Full uh, report on that. A lot of feedback takeaway coming up in about 10 minutes. As Dennis Allen finishing up with reporters right now. We'll let you hear what DA had to say. That's coming up. Russ Mitchell in 25 minutes. Right now with Tigers and the Pros. It's Matthew the Big O Muso. The big O. Tigers Oscar and the pros. Oh, they okay. still believe Marilyn Purple Monroe and Gold. Used to was a big fan. really rich now. No, she she wasn't. I, I promise you. Yeah. Clearly. Um. All right. Tigers and the pros. Hey, let's start with basketball, why don't we? The mm. NBA preseason's happening Please right now. Please tell me more. I will. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets were on the floor last night, Matt, in, uh, in NBA preseason basketball, the league that Oscar Robinson played in. Robertson. Robertson, that's what I said. No, it's not. Um, ben Simmons, he was on the floor. Mm. Take it in now because he'll probably get injured here shortly and be <laughs> off the floor. No, did he? Oh. Uh, nah. Uh, nah, 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 uh, Cam Thomas attempted threes in the game last night, though. No kidding. Yeah, hit 50% of them. Uh, two out of four. 12 points for Cam in 17 minutes. Just really solid. Fired up to actually watch him. Trenton Watford is also with the Nets. So, big LSU connection there. We'll see how it goes for Watford. He uh, he didn't play last night. Coach's decision. Aaron Nola was on the bump yesterday. Yeah. We were talking about it. Uh, had him in the second inning or the third inning of his work, I believe, in Tigers in the Pros yesterday. Ended up going five. Gave up four earned. Punched out eight, though. Uh, got tagged with the loss. The Phillies didn't really give him any run support either. Have to see what happens with old Philly. That could be Aaron's last appearance, last start of the year. And Philadelphia does not stave off elimination later today. And how about this? Uh, in the NFL right now, you're looking uh, at the receiving statistics. Just take a gander, Adam. You don't have to go uh, past the top seven to find four LSU Tigers. Jamar Chase, second in the league mm. in receiving yards. Justin Jefferson, third. Mm. Brian Thomas, sixth. Malik mm. Neighbors, seventh. DBU, mm. DBU might be on hiatus currently. Yeah, no doubt about that. But wide receiver U, LSU, firmly entrenched. Four in the top seven, and two of them are rookies. Don't play with LSU when it comes to wide receivers. That's Tigers in the pros. Presented by Optimize. Generatorpeople.com. Generatorpeople.com. Uh, maybe Helene or Milton, if they're reminders to you what storms can do, now is a great time to call our friends over at Optimize. You might be thinking, well, storm season has passed. I'll wait till next year. And I'll remind you, we lost power due to a freeze. There's always times where storms come through and can knock your power out. It inconveniences you. And maybe, like I always tell you, uh, before the storm strikes is the best time to call Optimize. When the storm's in the Gulf, it's too late. Uh, it takes time to go through the permitting, uh, all the processes, getting your electrical company out there to get everything situated. There are, there are regulations that have to be followed, like the generator has to be so far from windows and doors and things like that. So it's a great time to call now to start that process. Generatorpeople.com. It's optimized from Lake Charles to Slidell, everywhere in between on the 1012 corridor. They have four physical locations, so they can come to you no matter where you are. Nobody sells more Generac automatic home standby generators in Louisiana than Optimize. That's why they are the generator people. So go to generatorpeople.com. Um, just doing a little research here, Muse. Oscar Robertson was the uh, NBA's MVP in 1964. Oh, man. That he was, was a 12-time uh, All-Star. Man a three-time NBA All-Star Game MVP, a nine-time All-NBA First Teamer, two-time NBA All-Second Team, NBA Rookie of the Year, six-time NBA Assist Leader, the NBA Anniversary Team for the 35th, 50th, and 75th Anniversaries of the NBA. 
is number 14 retired by the Kings, is number one retired by the Bucks, two time Helms College Player of the Year, three time UPI College Player of the Year, two time USBWA College Player of the Year, three time Sporting News College Player of the Year, three time Consensus First Team All American, three time NCAA Scoring Leader, the three time First Team All MVC, number 12 retired by the Cincinnati Bearcats. He was Mr. Basketball in the United States of America in 1956. Um, I don't know how you do not know who Oscar Robertson is. It's just stunning to me. Well, I try to give you an explanation, but I mean, no, you there is no me, explanation. So, yeah, I mean, there is no explanation no, whatsoever. No, there is. There is. You're, you're going to say he's old. You're going to say gonna he's say. old. That's and all the I'm point say. is, there's people who played basketball during that era who you know, and he's one of the That's, literally one of the greatest ever in the history of the game. And to not even know the name of someone who's one of the greatest ever is just unfathomable. It's like the Pete Sampras thing. This is just. It, it's boggling my mind how there are these black holes in your brain for these all-time greats. I just wonder, like, are there others? Or is Muso existing in his own Barbie girl reality? I don't know. We'll find out after the break. AFR. Brought to you by Paris Construction and Roofing, ParisBuilt.com. Tell you every day, do business with someone you know, and do business with people who know who Oscar Robertson is. That's us, Paris Construction and Roofing. Go to ParisBuilt.com, ParisBuilt.com. Roof repairs, roof replacements. And look, Kim Mulkey trusts us. You go to the website right there on the homepage of the video, a uh, homepage of the website. You see the video of Kim Mulkey giving us her endorsement. Uh, we've done plenty of work at Coach Mulkey's house in the past as well. Uh, her uh, family members, listen, if you got a leak or think you might have damage, give us a call. And like I always say, there's two ways to find out if you got roof damage. One, have an inspection. Two, wait for terrain and you get water in your house. And one of those options is way better than the other. If you need a new roof and you're worried about the ability to pay, we have financing options for any level, even for your deductible. If you can't pay your insurance deductible, you're worried about that. We can work with you. Let us help you. It's Parish Construction and Roofing. Do business with someone you know. Parishbuilt.com. Parishbuilt.com. I took control. I took control. 